Before the video starts, I'm starting a five minute live show on Twitch. It'll be running from July 19th to July 23rd at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time each day. Yes, that was not a stutter. It's called the five minute podcast and I'm hosting it with my good buddy J-Dubs. It's basically one of my videos, but live and unscripted. So if you can make it for this experiment, please join us at twitch.tv slash cyanide music starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, July 19th. Okay, let's finally start the video. I'm sorry. Let me tell you a story about childhood trauma. Now, before you say anything, yes, my famous red gaming chair that has been in a total of like four videos is gone. RIP. They're currently sleeping in the shed because we're going through a rough patch in our relationship, you know. And also, I got a new tripod. You're currently on a new tripod. So yeah, we're currently in season two, I guess. I don't know. You know, it'd be really funny if, if this YouTube channel had seasons. Back in 2002, things were looking up for the gaming industry. The restaurant Hooters released their magnum opus for the PS1 Hooters road trip. Hitman 2 Silent Ass release. And little known company Disney decided to throw their hat in the ring with their own video game based off the movie that came out the same year, Lilo and Stitch. Lilo and Stitch is a fantastic movie that I have not seen in years so I don't remember anything about it but I know I liked it. Can you imagine like with the Wikipedia reviews like for albums it says like 8 out of 10, 7 out of 10, Tony liked it. <laughs> the movie follows a five-year-old Hawaiian girl named Lila who adopts Stitch, a blue creature that she thinks is just a hideous dog, but in reality, he turns out to be a genocidal maniac. There's a whole bunch of wacky characters like Lilo's big sister, Naughty, who is sick of Lilo's shit, Gantu, a himbo who has way too many questionable images of him on the internet, Mr. Bubbles, who is trying to be an extra on Men in Black, and Ice Cream Man, a sunburned Hawaiian man whose ice cream is always collateral and damage. A fun fact, I fact-checked it, his name is literally Ice Cream Man. Bro, this movie is one of my favorite Disney films, probably second to Mulan, because let's be honest, Mulan can major ass. So naturally, in the ever-growing gaming market, Disney decided to throw together a game about Lilo and Stitch for the PlayStation 1 and the PC. And that game was a little game called Lilo and Stitch Trouble in Paradise. And I'm not even joking, that sent a shiver down my spine when I said it. <laughs> in a game that I can only assume was marketed to children, it is remarkably unsettling. The graphics looks like someone at Disney looked at those liminal space memes and went, fuck it, that's a game now. The gameplay is atrocious and the sounds are... They fill me with this indescribable dread. You wanna know what would scare Tiny Tony back in the day? This menu noise. Make Just make it stop. stop. Now, I'd argue that noise instills more dread in me than any horror film could ever. The music in this game is some of the most unsettling soundscapes I've ever heard in my life that immediately fill me with fear. For instance, I could be living it up with all the babes, all the money, but if I heard this music, I would die. The moment I hear this song, I'm transported back to a time when I was a small boy and I was so afraid of this game that my sweet, sweet grandma insinuated that I was a pussy. <laughs> so now that I've laid the groundwork of my trauma, let me tell you about the game. I'm sure if I put the Elvis song here, I'd get copyrighted. Lilo and Stitch Trouble in Paradise is a horrific cycle of the same gameplay levels over and over, but not even enjoyable in the way that Toontown or Warframe is. The game's story, if you're feeling generous enough to even call it that, is told via cutscenes that are ripped directly from the movie, but the quality is still somehow abysmal. After the intro scene for the movie stops playing, we can assume that roughly 100% of the animation budget went straight to the movie. Lilo looks like the baby from Ice Age, Stitch looks semi-okay, but that's hashtag not my Stitch, and the environment is just way too eerie for a fucking kid's game. Anyways, as Lilo runs off, we get into the main portion of this game, say it with me everyone, Crash, Crash Bandicoot, Bandicoot if it was horribly made, made. yeah! Now the main goal of each of these levels is to collect all four postcards, which isn't too hard in theory, however there are some frankly bullshit placements. <laughs> That's hard enough. However, what makes it even harder are the dozens of enemy types per level. Maybe in games there's one, two, hell, maybe even three enemies per level. Not with this bullshit. In this starting level alone, there's armadillos, silly lizards, a bull that charges full speed at a five-year-old girl, literal tiki torches that set you on fire, protogens with guns, and a single Hawaiian mother with a broom. Now all those enemies pale in comparison to the true enemy of the game, the controls. They're really bad. The game has an input delay and a sort of momentum where your character keeps moving despite you letting go of the controls, which when you're trying to land on the smallest platform possible, making this so you waste all your lives on this one jump, you will want to commit die. There are so many jumps you have to make where you're at the mercy of your controller because Lilo can't leave home without her trusty butter shoes, which is unfortunate because everywhere she goes is in ruin. Now back in the day, I played this on my old computer when I was a child, and I don't remember how busted the controls were on that one. I used my PS1 that lives inside my computer who has only the best games installed on them. Hi y'all, welcome to Joe. Georgia. So I've played both versions before. And originally, I wasn't even gonna use my PS1, I was gonna use my PC because I have the disc still. But it no longer works because it's just so old, and I don't remember us ever complaining about the control scheme. Now, it could just be my copy that I'm using today, but that won't stop me from conquering my fear. Let's do it for Tiny Tony. <laughs> oh, now that my training montage is over to show that I've grown as a person, it's time to conquer my fear. 
no, no. <laughs> I can't explain to you the dread this gives me. The dread is comparable to knowing that a bomb's about to go off and you can't do anything to stop it. However, this might be worse because Lilo looks like the baby from Ice Age. So for those who have never played this game, your main enemy that you have to battle is a rock creature who is grossly unsettling. Basically what they do is they form in the most terrifying way possible and have some of the most terrifying sound design ever, at least for a like a nine-year-old child. So now that you know what I'm terrified of and you see what that thing is doing the victory position over there. It looks like a manga. It's time to conquer my fear and defeat this rock creature. No, 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 stop it. Stop it. No, 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 no. So to defeat this terrifying creature, you must dodge his attacks and wait for him to turn around. And then once he does so, you must, and I'm not joking, use literal voodoo to hit him in the back. It is remarkably easy. You do exactly what I said, and it's just two hits to the rock demon at most. After they get eviscerated by either a five-year-old or a gay alien that twerks on them haters, you go to the next level, which is just the same bullshit, but reskin. Now the fact is you can't progress to certain levels of the game until you get all four collectibles on the previous maps you just did. Which is very unfortunate, but some of the more, uh, how do I say this politely? Oh yeah. Bullshit placement. Now it may have taken me at least seven times to get this one postcard, which was very fun. It's gotta hit the main one, the top one, and then I'm good. So after wasting 30 minutes of my life trying to collect a spinning JPEG, I'm finally able to progress through the game by battling Myrtle in a 2D platforming parkour foot race where poor Lilo has to use her butter shoes and Myrtle gets to use her scooter. Are you fucking kidding me? What kind of horse shit is this? The deck stacked against my girl Lilo. <laughs> Lo and behold, Lilo is stuck in this inescapable hell as she tries to jump over broken pipes, sidewalks that are under construction, and most prevalent in Hawaii for some reason, giant fucking explosive barrels for these literal toddlers to get killed by. Now I'm not embarrassed to admit this, this level almost took me about 50 tries and and if you don't believe me, here's a little compilation. Uh, I don't think this game is for children. I think it's a rage game in disguise. Anyways, after so many attempts, I finally beat Myrtle by a fucking pixel. And I celebrated like I just witnessed the birth of my first child. Go, 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 go. Come on! Yes! Now we have, we water her tricycle. After this fight against God herself, we go back to one of the rock fight places from earlier to where Mr. Bubble shows up and rightfully asks what the hell a five-year-old is doing in town all by herself. Lilo answers that she's teaching Stitch how to be good and they have one of the best interactions any dialogue writer could ever dream of writing. Why don't you try leading by example and go home like a good girl? Got here. Bitch, lead by example. Elvis Presley is a model citizen. Now, I don't mean to speak ill of the dead or whatever, but I think this is just Elvis propaganda. After this, Stitch proceeds to go to the next level while Lilo runs away, proving that she's a spineless coward. Now, this leads us to one of the worst level designs that this game has to offer. And that's running towards the camera while you're trying to escape from random enemies who are either from the movie or proof of a zombie outbreak. It's basically just the levels, except you have to haul ass while only having a little bit of clearance to maneuver yourself. Now, it's possible to escape once you get the hang of it, but holy shit, this creature hauls ass to get you. Stitch, you gotta stop twerking on these highly sensitive creatures. Now, once Stitch is done wreaking havoc, we get our first double boss, which is probably the furthest we've gotten in this game as children. You know, as I play this, I really get a glimpse into just how much of a pussy I was as a child. Now, if we go left, we get confirmation that Gantu really failed at trying to stop Stitch from raiding havoc in Hawaii because there's literally floating islands, broken bridges, and whatever the fuck this is running among. I guess that's why they call it Trouble in Paradise. <laughs> Only instead of getting repetitive like Toontown does, the game gets astronomically harder and you're not even working towards something. There are times when I think a no hit run would be physically impossible because of shit like this. There's more enemies such as a robot stitch who has 100% accuracy when it comes to slide tackling, literal falling boulders, and a fucking spider just to add to the childhood trauma because why not? After this level, we realize that the game developers realized that they could just make a level 2D to save on resources, which just goes to show that the only form of variation they thought they could do in this game was uh, by switching the camera angle. <laughs> this game is the definition of insanity because because there are times where you'll die due to an enemy or constant arrows being shot out at you and then the game will instantly spawn you right back in the line of fire, immediately putting an end to your life and run, making you redo the entire level, which makes me question if there truly is a god. <laughs> I mean, I could go on for fucking hours about how rage inducing this game is, so I'm just gonna get into the quote unquote special levels where you run away from the scary bad guy. After two aliens in drag try to capture a dog with rabies, we have to escape from Jumbo, who has near 100% accuracy with his literal gun. You have to run towards the camera, which is commonplace with these levels, a design that makes it so you have not even a second to make a decision leading to you falling off the map and spawning right on top of Jumba over and over again. This game fucking sucks. You have to do a literal serpentine to dodge his perfect aim, but because of that horseshit, it automatically slows you down, which allows Jumba to catch up to you by going at 300 miles per hour on foot. Now while Jumba has 100% accuracy with his bullets and his hitbox of Stitch, it seems that the land itself doesn't even have functioning hitboxes as you can nail a jump and fall right through it, resetting your entire run. In fact, I was so unhappy with this, I forgot to stop recording and accidentally kept recording for an extra 
extra half hour while I ate dinner. Anyways, I finally escaped Jumba and we get expertly crafted dialogue. Why is that so beepy? What's the matter, Stitch? <laughs> we need to find them and get rid of them somewhere. I know. We can throw them in the volcano. <laughs> now, the next painful level may have taken me about an hour, so I reacted the exact same way I've done this entire time, which if you can probably see what it is, it's it's where I scream. <laughs> now, the third battle you have to do is running away from Lilo's social worker, which I can't believe is a factual statement I just said. In this insanely terrifying level, Lilo, a five-year-old Hawaiian girl in a flower dress, has to run from a very tall African-American adult male in a three-piece suit with earrings who is currently hellbent on catching and chasing her through literal ruin. Lilo. Mr. Bubbles is a good man in the movies. Why does this level make him look like a pedophile? This is probably the only tall level out of the four because it's more funny than irritating because bubbles is just hellbent on chasing the little girl on foot we also get illustrated to just how empty this game is in the voice acting department because the only lines in this entire scene are Lilo, come here. which is giving me huge Jason vibes it's not that i can't enjoy a game without voice acting aragami is one of my favorite games and the only voice acting in that game is people moaning with a reverb filter on awesome. it's just that this game has occasional voice lines and nothing else. <laughs> Anyways, after Lilo avoids having her picture underneath the word missing on the side of a milk carton, we see a cutscene of Gantu capturing Lilo and Stitch leads to just capture Lilo. <laughs> Now, despite him falling and landing in Hawaii, we can see that Stitch is now located on a fucking volcano because that makes sense. This leads to the hardest level in the entire game, which is a huge compliment after how bullshit all these levels have been. A level titled yeah. Gantu. They must have really been pushing the game at this point. <laughs> in this final level, you have to run away from Gantu, who is currently in a different colored ship than he was earlier, and is the embodiment of chaos. You have to run away from Gantu, who has even more perfect accuracy than Jumba did while dodging literal lava because, oh, by the way, Stitch is on top of an active volcano! But when you eventually miss a jump because it's guaranteed in this cruel anime that we call life, Gantu can just immediately shoot at you as you spawn in, which is just complete horseshit at best. As Gantu shoots at you with his piss lasers, you have to jump across dozens of way too dangerous jumps before you go into the open hellscape that is the second half of the level. You have to get the first half of this level absolutely perfect because it is a guaranteed hit from Gantu who can perfectly guess where you're gonna jump, given you can also dodge the protogens who are just making this level even harder somehow. I may have had a mini breakdown playing this level. What are you I wasn't giving up though. I've been playing this game for the past five hours, unfortunately, and I also, unfortunately, have a need to prove people wrong, so I was not quitting. Another training montage, I guess. <sighs> How about you edit a training Now, after almost 40 minutes of playing this level, I called my sister Alex, who also loves Lilo and Stitch, and also shared the trauma with me. And I showed her just how hard this level was after DMing her about it. She joined our Discord call, and I played it for her. I made it a promise to myself to just stop recording the first half and only record the second half, because I was getting almost to the second half pretty consistently, so I wanted to at least record the second half just in case. So as I was showing it to her, I finally got to the second half, and I was fully expecting to fail, but I had my game face on, and this is what happened. All right, and then there are these pro Protogen motherfuckers, you fire bullets at you. Fuck! No, I went the- Did I go the wrong way? Oh my god! Did you do it? So yeah, I was fucking floored. I'd like to thank the Academy for this award. I'd like to thank my sister. I'd like to thank Gantu's gun for being a constant source of stability in my life. I'd like to thank Mr. Bubbles for risking his job as a social worker to chase down and sedate a toddler. And most importantly at all, I'd like to thank those rock people for ruining my childhood. But I finally beat the game, so get bitch, motherfucker! Woo! So after a decade of never completing this game and not even knowing there was more levels, I've not only beaten one of the hardest games I've ever played, but also conquered my childhood fear. Those stupid rockmen have dominated my mind palace ever since I was a small boy, and goddammit, I'm not letting no rockmen ravage me ever again. And no, I'm not rephrasing that, fuck you! I can now officially bookend this chapter of my life, which is a weird thing to think about. Because I've finally completed this game and have, and I mean this in all sincerity, no plans to ever return to this bullshit ever again, are you kidding me? The controls are awful, the level designs are convoluted and way too difficult, the rock people are insanely easy, the running levels are trash, and this game sits all over the legacy of Crash Bandicoot, which I will not stand for! I give this game a 2 out of 10. Thanks for watching, make sure to hit that subscribe button to help me in my quest to go from underrated to just rated. And while you're at it, make sure to politely... Press that like button because it's been obliterated too many times. There's going to be some videos that pop up by my head because if you like this one, you'll surely like those ones. Thanks for stopping by and I hope to see you again. Bye. What the dog doing?